Do you know who I serve, Leila? Yourself? Deep time plans of the Cognite? Yes, and before all those things... She shrugged. I won't speak their names out loud, or all the food in this emporium will spoil and all the wine will turn into vinegar. They are ruinous powers. I understand. Good. So you see, I had to give thanks. Though my mission to Eustis Majoris failed, I escaped with my life to continue my work. I had to give thanks for that. Orfeo would... Dear Orfeo doesn't understand. I don't know what he tells you he is, Leila, but he's a mercenary. A prostitute. Brilliant, skilled, talented, but he works for money. I don't do what I do for money or even power, as power is understood by the grandees of this imperium of man. I am, I suppose, a man of quite strong religious beliefs. You need to give thanks, she asked, drinking a sip of water. To the old gods I serve, I had to make an appeasement, benediction. I had to make a sacrifice of thanks for deliverance, even though that meant risking discovery. A sacrifice must honor the eight, for eight is the symbol, eight-pointed. A common follower might have killed eight at the eighth house on the eighth street, in the eighth enclave, at the eighth in the evening, but I eschew such crudity. The agents of the throne would have recognized the occult significance in the moment, even they are not that stupid. So I made eight subtle sacrifices that, according to inspection, would seem random and unconnected. But they still had ritual purpose. He nodded. He ate some more and drank some wine. She refilled his glass. The beggar in the alley I made eight incisions with a knife that weighed eight ounces. I did this at eight minutes to the hour. The housemaid had eight moles on her left thigh and took eight minutes to suffocate. I was very particular. The gamblers both held double eights in the hands and eight shots were discharged, and so on. The moneylender, killed at eight minutes past the hour, was slain with eight primary blows, no more, no less, and had been busy accounting the books for the eighth trading month. I anointed all the bodies with certain marks and rules, all made in water now long evaporated. It was ritual, Leila. It was worship. It was not the act of a psychopath. I see that now, she said. He felt her remark was perhaps sardonic. He half smiled anyway and drank some water. Such an extraordinary level of detail, she added, scooping up more rice. To plan it like that? I was taught to improvise, Layla. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't think like you think. My mind doesn't work like yours does. Really? I was trained from birth to utilize the full dynamic of my mind. Trained in noetic techniques that give me an edge. More than an edge. What would take another man a week to plan, I can do in a moment. Really? She repeated. He enjoyed the howter in her voice, the skirn. She was tolerating him. Really, Leila. I am not boasting or showing off. This is what the cognita does to a mind. Acute observation for start, the ability to read low-level passive body language, the ability to notice and compare, to analyze, to predict. Prove it. He lifted his glass and smiled. Where would you like me to start? He asked. Oh, you go right ahead. How many buttons did the waitress have on her bodies? Leila hunched her shoulder. Six? Six. Correct. Good. How many were undone? Two, she said. Well noticed. The top two? No, the top one and the bottom one. Her hips were wide. Again, excellent. Are you sure you hadn't had cognite training, Leila? She snorted. All you probably both like to look at pretty girls. Dressed in? What? Dressed in? A bodice? The silk from? Hesperus. Good, but no. Samter. The weave is tighter and there is rumpled quality, a touching to Samtir silk, and the buttons were made on Gurdun. Really? They were gold and had the hallmark. As she leaned over, Leila put down her glass. You're making this up. Am I? The man at the booth next to us. We passed him on the way in, rogue trader, armed. Where was his concealed weapon? Left armpit. I saw the bulge. Got a blade in his right boot too, under the helm of his trousers. You are sharp. It's my business to know. Was his moustache longer on the left or right? I... Why does that matter? Shorter on the right, because he smokes an obscura pipe and the hairs don't grow so fast on the side he sucks the mouthpiece. You can see it in his mannerism with the ihostick, a habitual rise and draw. 
which means he'll be unpredictable and jumpy. Obscura does that. Now you're learning. It means nothing, she laughed. The man by the window. Left or right-handed? Right. He's drumming the fingers of his right hand on the table top beside his cup of caffeine. Wrong. He's watching the street crowd because he's waiting for a business party he doesn't know. His left hand is under the table on the butt of his weapon. A hectocar model. Badly stowed. The right hand is a distraction. Layla shook her head. Should I go over and ask him to prove it? If you want to get shot. The barman. 19 Gurundine Irregulars. A guard veteran. Why? Tattoo on his left wrist. Company of Angels. The vet of the 19 took that as a tat after Latiswa Heights. You can see that? Not from here, but on the way in. And you, me? You've eaten enough, you're full. But you like the rice, so you keep picking at it, even though you don't want it. It's good rice. And you haven't touched your wine in 13 minutes. You keep playing with the glass, but you don't drink. Because you're afraid that if you get merry, you lose control of the situation. But you play with the glass all the same, as to not draw attention to the fact that you're not drinking. That's just nonsense. Is it? He looked at her. You sit slightly sidelong to me, favoring your left buttock because your right hips give you pain. Old wound? An augmentic? She breathed out. An augmentic. Molotov clapped his hands. You dearly want to go back now, but you're afraid of goading me or having to force me. You want to make it seem like my idea. Now look, you're quite certain I don't know that Orfeo instructed you to let me loose for a few hours. Orfeo thinks I'm going to steer crazy. The idea was to let me walk around and blow off steam. Damn it, Moltok. Don't damn it at all. Enjoy it. What could I do, do you suppose? What could I do just sitting here? I don't know. Moltok removed a tiny file from his sleeve and put it on the tabletop beside the caldora of rice. Osicolo Plague. In suspension. I took it from Orfeo's personal kit. If I release it here, I could decimate the entire city quarter. For the love of no, I won't. There will be no sense in that. But consider the options. The banker at the table to our left. He works at the city mint. He has a brooch on his waistcoat before you ask. The sigil of the banking guild and the office of coinage circulation. If I dropped the file into his business case, he would find it and open it when he returned to his office. The mint would be contaminated and would have to be sealed off for 15 years. The local currency would crash and bring the subsector economy down. Decades of damage. Or take the young man over there, the one in the private boot. He's the second son of a minor baron, slumming it, but I know he's in with the court crowd. Motok produced a small medical injector from his pocket and put it down on the table beside the file. It was full of clear fluid. Suspensoid liquid. Inert and vicious, metabolized in six hours. I could go into the washrooms, load the plague solution into it, and bump into that second sun as I come back. In a day or two, the entire royal house of this plant would be dead from contact plague. An ideal moment to stage a coup. But that just... that's just... She whispered. Now you're getting the idea, he said. What about this? That drunk by the bar. I've been gently hypnotizing him with his finger movements since we came in. Allow me to prove it. Motok moved his fingers. The drunken man lurched and tottered over to them. What's your name? Motok asked him. Sir Garnus Govior. The man wobbled. And your job? I am chief under translator to the house of the governor, sir. Leila stared at Motok. And you thought I'll let you pick this bar? He smiled. It's a famous haunt of the administratum classes. I notice Garnus here because of his signet ring. This ring? The man asked, displaying it so abruptly he swayed. The very same. You have FaceTime with the governor then? I do, sir. I surely do. So if I asked you to strangle him the next time you saw him, setting off a local sector war that would bring in House Givant, Nightbray and Clovis, you'd have no problem. None at all, the man assured Moltok. Not a problem at all. You strangle the Lord Governor? Leila asked. Like bloody shot? Like he was a bloody whelp, yes ma'am. But I won't, said Moltok. You can go now, Garnis. Thank you kindly, the man said and staggered off. Motok looked at the wide-eyed Layla. Every opening, every chance, every chink, that's what the Cognite are trained to do. To look, to see, to find, to use. In the course of this delightful lunch, Layla, I could have brought the subsector down three or four times over just like that. 
He fickled something away with his thumb and landed on the floor of the bar and broke, oozing fluid. Oh, holy. Layla began. Relax. It's just a suspension fluid. The plague's in my pocket. So let's consider the Inquisition. The Inquisition? Most particularly the office of the Oros on this world. You can't see that from here. Oh, I can. And the overbar mirror. See? Terra, I hadn't noticed that. He sipped his wine. I can see the fortress of the Inquisition from my seat. Such a big fortress, towering over the city. It was built by the Black Templars, you know? Long since vacated, but one day they might be back. Until then, the Inquisition uses the keep. It's going to be a bloody fight the day the Templars return. Anyway, they're flying flags. Several dark flags. What does that mean? Does it mean anything? They're flying flags. The Inquisition doesn't suppose anyone understands their protocols and heraldry. Black flags above their fortress, just for show, just for threat, but I have made it my business to understand and monitor the way they signal to one another. So, I can barely see the mirror from where I'm sitting. I'll tell you what it means. The flags are the black crest of Silico, Bleaky and Quist, symbols the Inquisitions identify with respect and honor. They are flying ceremonially. There are envoys in residence, several high-ranking envoys. Actually, you can tell that simply by the number of weapon ports they've uncovered. Someone important is here. Meaning? Meaning? Ravenor's here, as we feared, and they've decided to rein him in. Which is good news for us. There was a sudden brutal crash. Voices around the eating house arose in alarm. Garnius had slipped over in the pool of suspension fluid and brained himself on the edge of the bar rail. He was dead. Let's go, said Moltok. They rose and picked their way out of the eating house, moving around the crowd that had gathered around Garnius's misfortune. That's nine, Leila whispered. I told you only wanted eight. I did, but I'm not stupid. This one is in ritual. This is a ninth to ruin the pattern. The orders are sharp and clever. They would have seen a pattern of eight except for this.